you ever felt that despite your best efforts, so just running in place, not making any progress towards what you're trying to achieve. I know that I feel that way sometimes, and in my quest to figure out the solution to this problem, I came across something called the five attitude diseases. Indifference, indecision, doubt, worry, and being overcautious. Now keep in mind, these aren't just fleeting emotions, they're persistent states that really shape our actual actions and outcomes. And in the game of life, it's extremely important we figure out how to manage these attitude diseases if we want to live a more fulfilled and successful life. In today's video, I'll be sharing what these five diseases are, how they're keeping you stuck in the game of life, and my personal solutions to solving these problems. Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Christian. I'm a certified occupational therapist, and I help people live independent and fulfilling lives. On this channel, we discuss real life lessons that can help you level up in the game of life. Now, I'm a firm believer that how successful you do in life is not going to depend solely on how smart you are or how hard that you're working. It's actually going to depend on how you think. Depending on how you think, it's going to shape your very actions, it's going to shape how you approach adversity, challenges, so it's extremely, extremely important to control how you feel about the things that's happening in your day-to-day -day life. The first attitude disease we'll be discussing is going to be indifference. Now, indifference is the lack of interest or concern for oneself or basically anything that's happening around one's life. Now, I'm guilty for really being indifferent about things, but it's not really intentional. You see, I'm pretty busy with my full-time job in the hospital, then I have a family here, you know, I have my wife, and on top of that, I'm doing all this extra stuff on the side. But the problem that I ran to, the reason I was so indifferent about things is because I was simply just too busy to worry about stuff, right? I didn't want to inconvenience myself by taking on and caring about more things. But that's just not how life works. Because if you want to succeed, if you want to improve on your life, you do have to worry about stuff. You do have to basically take interest and have strong feelings for things so that way you can start actually making progress towards those things. And I think many people who work 9 to 5 jobs can relate to this. I mean, you just simply work and work day after day after day, the same old thing, and things sort of stagnate, right? You don't really think whether you did a great job or not at work, then you clock out, you come back home, you're on autopilot, you eat, you watch some television, and then you repeat it all over again. You're pretty much indifferent to the surrounding, you're just on autopilot going about your day-to-day -day life, and that can be the extremely dangerous place to be. Because ultimately, if you're not really looking for opportunities, if you're not really having strong feelings about stuff, then you're not really going to make any progress. You're going to miss opportunities when they're right in front of you because you simply kind of zoned out and tuned everything out of your mind. Now, the way that I overcame this problem is I started setting goals for myself. I basically started to set problems for myself that needs to be solved. And oftentimes, this requires me to learn more things, develop a new skill. And this actually pushed me to actually care about things again. It wasn't until I started this YouTube channel, started worrying about financial freedom, that I really started to feel progress again, feel like I actually cared about things. Instead of simply being on autopilot where I would just work, come back home, lay it on the couch, and then repeat it all over again. Now, when I get back home, because I have a goal, I'm starting to think Think about things, learn more things, you know, read more books, watch some podcasts. It's just simply the idea that you have a goal to pursue, have something there to keep you moving forward. That's how you escape indifference. And I think many people should have something they're pursuing if they want to keep moving up in the game of life. And moving on to attitude disease number two is going to be indecision. Now, indecision is of course the inability to make decisions, which of course causes a lot of missed opportunities. A lot of people are guilty for this, me, myself included. And the reason is simply, you know, making a decision you have the risk of being wrong. And for people, we just simply, it doesn't feel good to be wrong about stuff. You know, we, we like to be right, but whenever you are forced to make a decision, when you commit to a decision, there's always going to be a chance that you made the wrong decision. But you must not let that fact actually stop you from making decisions. Because how the game of life really works is that sometimes you're going to be right, sometimes you're going to be wrong. But only by making a decision will you see the next steps. Will you actually move forward to understand what you need to do next? Too many people don't like making decisions, so they simply stay stuck at the same level. And to give you a personal example, you know, from my experience, is that I'm someone who is pursuing financial freedom. So when I was learning to invest, I had such a difficult time actually deploying any sort of capital in my investments. Because guess what? If I actually did invest some money and it went down, now I would feel really bad, like I made the wrong decision, right? But I had to overcome that feeling. I had to accept the fact that sometimes my investments are going to be right, and sometimes my investments are going to be wrong, right? But the fact, however, is that I had to be confident with my decision. I had to accept the risk.
risk and I had to accept that this is what I wanted to do. And too many people let indecision drag on things that they know they had to do, but they were simply too scared to actually make that decision for themselves. And in my opinion, the best way to overcome indecision is to simply set a deadline, set a hard deadline for themselves, right? Because a lot of us, we have decisions to do things, but we don't really tell ourselves, okay, this decision has to be done by this time, right? We kind of leave it up to chance, leave it up to fate, like, you know, okay, you know, whatever happens, happens, and we're not really going to decide until then. And what oftentimes ends up happening is you just simply waste time because eventually that decision still needs to be made. All you did was delay the time to actually get there. So now you can't really move forward with the next steps. You are really delaying on the progress, you know, that you should be making. So you need to be firm with your decision making and you can't just simply, you know, wander about life not wanting to make any decisions because as you progress through the game of life, you're going to be faced with countless decisions and you will be wrong sometimes. But being wrong at the time doesn't mean that you made the wrong move. Being wrong simply made you now know what you need to do in order to be right. Attitude disease number three is going to be doubt and this is a big one because it's basically the lack of one's confidence or one's abilities which can of course lead to us not taking any risks and not really doing things that we need to do or we want to do. And doubt can be present in many many different things. You can doubt whether you're able to actually have a great body, right? You can doubt whether you're able to make enough money. You can even doubt whether you can find the right partner. Doubt exists everywhere because it is simply a survival mechanism to protect ourselves. Because what your brain is doing is basically telling you like, all right, hold up here, you know, are you sure you can do it? Are you sure you're safe? But here's the thing though, you're never really going to be 100% sure whether you can do anything. So if you let doubt overwhelm your ability to actually take action, then you're going to miss out on plenty of opportunities in life. Keep in mind that doubt is always going to be there. I mean, me, as I'm shooting this video right now, I'm doubting myself, you know, I'm trying to push past it. I mean, I'm worried whether people are even going to like the message I'm sharing this video, whether I'm doing well enough in this video. You know, I'm doubting myself right now, but I have to push past through it. What a lot of people tend to actually doubt is their own personal ability to succeed in the game of life. Because not believing in yourself, doubting your abilities is a surefire way to keep you stuck at a very low level. Because if you don't believe in yourself, then who else is really going to do so, right? Because whether you doubt yourself or not, the outcome isn't proven yet. You don't really know what's going to happen. So you may as well just take the plunge and do what you need to do. I'm just going to publish this video right now and fingers crossed, you know, it does really well. And if it doesn't, so what? I'm going to make another video, another video, and I'm going to keep on trying. I personally don't think that doubt is something you can completely erase from your mind. It's something you have to consistently overcome again and again, but it gets easier each time. The problem, however, is that when you start a new thing and you're not really, really good at it, you're going to doubt yourself a lot more, but it gets easier the more that you do it. Now, my personal tip for overcoming doubt is to be very comfortable with failure. I think people fear failure, but they really, really shouldn't. Failure is going to be inevitable. I am inevitable. You need to understand this, right? Whatever you do in life, you will probably fail at some point. So there's no point being afraid of it, which is where doubt really comes from. If we're not really, you know, confident in our ability to succeed, then we're going to doubt ourselves. But failing isn't really losing. Failing is simply figuring out that that path, that solution or that thing wasn't the right way to do it, right? So that way you can learn from that and become better next time. I mean, just ask the most successful people in the world. They're constantly doubting themselves. They're failing all the time, but that doesn't stop them from taking action. So whether you're afraid or not, if you doubt yourself, the best way to overcome it is just to do it. Do it enough times, fail enough times, and eventually it's not going to be as scary anymore. If you're enjoying the content up to this point, go ahead and smash the like button. It's the easiest way you can let me know that this kind of content is giving value to you, and that way I'll know what to research for future videos. Now back to the video. And moving on to attitude disease number four, it's going to be worry. Worry is the excessive concern for the future or a potential negative outcome. And this affects a lot of people, and I have to say that that I at least proudly have overcome it to some degree. Now, while worrying is a very normal thing to do, worrying excessively can paralyze you to making any sort of decision at all. And actually, let me tell you a story. Because when I was learning to be an occupational therapist, I actually failed my very, very first big exam and I had to retake it all over again. Now, the second time I actually took that test, I was extremely worried, right? I was so worried whether I'll fail again, whether I'm doing enough. You know, it wasn't that I didn't have the skills or whatnot. I was just simply so 
so worried because it has happened to me before. And my point is this, however, is that even though you are worried, you cannot worry to the point that it paralyzes your action. Because understand this, when you're worried about a future outcome, you're worried about something that is simply abstract. It hasn't happened yet. You have no control over it. So whether you worry or not, it's not really going to impact anything. If anything, it's going to make you a lot more anxious. It's going to cause you to mess things up right now. My solution at least to overcoming worry, something that I'm quite proud of, is to really focus on the present. You need to focus on things that you can control because by focusing on the things you can control, you narrow down the scope of what you're really worried about. Because if you're worried about something and you realize like, hmm, I can't really control that thing, then what is the point of worrying? All you're doing is adding extra anxiety to yourself. But if you're worried about something that you can control, you can actually do, now you can start taking action so you can actually fix the problem, right? You can fix your worries right there. And a great book about this is called The Power of Now. And The Power of Now basically explains that there's no point worrying too far in the past or in the future because ultimately those things don't really exist. Only by focusing on the now, on the present, can you ground yourself and stop really going down this rabbit hole or really spiraling out of control. So whenever you start to worry too much about things, start to just ask yourself, can you control it or not? If you can't control it, stop worrying about it. If you can control it, start taking action. I apply this almost on a daily basis. I work in the medical field where we have so many problems, there's constantly things going wrong, but I always ground myself with this. What can I do right now and to focus on that one thing? That's how I overcome worry. And finally, at number five is being overcautious. Now, being overcautious is being overly careful to the point where we are not even taking any sort of minimal risk. And how this impacts us is that it impacts our ability to actually grow, impacts our ability to take any risk or make any progress because we're simply not willing to take any sort of risk. What you need to understand is that in the game of life, there's a lot of risk to be taken, right? If you want some sort of reward, you have to risk something. If you're taking your car out for a drive, there's always a risk that you might get in an accident. If you're taking a test for some sort of exam, there's always the risk that you might fail. There's always the risk in everything that you do. It is the process of understanding how to take risks in which you succeed. You basically are trying to minimize your risk while maximizing your reward. Being overcautious stops you from applying to that new job. Being overcautious stops you from investing that money. Being overcautious stops you from trying to ask that new girl or guy out on a date, right? It is completely okay to play it safe in the game of life, but you cannot play it safe to the point where it restricts you from making any sort of progress. And honestly, the solution to this is to simply understand that risk is all a part of life. If you want to succeed in anything, you need to learn how to take risk. Keep in mind though, even though there's risk in anything, there is a way you can minimize risk. By improving on your knowledge, on your skills, on your education, you can always minimize the risk while still accepting the reward itself. For example, if you want to learn how to invest your money, then you will most likely have way less risk investing if you start learning about it first. Of course, if you start taking risk blindly, right, that's not going to be a very good thing to do. But guess what? If you learn about it, you read some books, you watch some videos, you know, you learn about investing, then the risk of investing is going to be a lot lower to you. So this is how you actually manage it. The majority of people in the game of life are extremely careful because they're constantly wanting to protect themselves. And while there's nothing wrong with that, if you want to really achieve a fulfilled life, a successful life, at some point, you're going to have to take some risk. So make sure you prepare yourself and understand that risk is all part of the game and that's completely okay. So that's about it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more and go ahead and check out this video over here for more content just like this. And until the very next one, take care. Peace.